You know, I remember November of 2001 and going to see Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for the first time on opening day and absolutely loving it, that it followed the book relatively closely. And I was impressed that Christopher Columbus was able to pull off the movie of that size and that scope and that scale. And I was very excited to see that the franchise was going to go on for at least six more movies. Then that ended in 2011, a solid 10 years later, and I was happy with the way that it ended, even if I had some complaints about some of the story choices that were made in the scripting process of the later films, where I felt that they took away some of the oomph from some of the past, the, the, the like books five and six, uh, in order to do a build up into book seven, which again, at the end of the day, I was very satisfied with, with how it all turned out. And then a couple years down the road, we hear JK Rowling wants to do another series. She wants to do a prequel series, fantastic beasts and where to find them. A story of Newt Scamander and his adventures, uh, leading in, uh, to, uh, to, I don't know, uh, dealing with Grindelwald, who was like the precursor to Voldemort and a young Dumbledore and all sorts of things. First movie came out fun. It was fun. Had some problems. I, I didn't think the script was very good, but it was entertaining. Second one came out, it was better, but still had a lot of scripting problems. And in fact, that was the biggest criticism and the movie still kind of turned in a bit, I think it turned in a bit lower of returns. And a lot of it was because the story just seemed kind of all over the place. And when we come to find out that JK Rowling was the sole screenwriter of this, in fact, her first screenplay was the first Fantastic Beast, which is one of the reasons why I kind of gave her the benefit of the doubt, you know, that the second one, it wasn't any better. And she even destroyed her own canon at some point, which I thought was fascinating. If you look at McGonagall and, uh, McGonagall and how old she was uh, and, and the books and the original movies and then in this movie is it, it, crazy. But then we found out that Fantastic Beast 3 was going to be delayed for a while because they wanted to work on uh, the script. And now we find out today that it's officially moving forward. Uh, seeing here that uh, Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Grindelwald may not have performed critically and commercially well as Warners was hoping, but that doesn't mean the studio is setting the franchise aside. Case in point, while various signs have already po pointed to Fantastic Beasts 3 moving ahead as planned, Warner Brothers has officially given the green light to the threequel and provided a few details on what we can expect. So it's been announced that Fantastic Beasts 3 is officially in pre-production and cameras will begin rolling in spring of 2020. Most of the main characters from the first two films will be back for the next installment, but one individual will have a bigger role, and that's Jessica Williams, Professor Eulalie, uh, who was introduced in The Crimes of Grindelwald as a teacher at the uh, Livermoney Morning School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, i.e. the United States equivalent of Hogwarts. One thing uh, that distinguishes the first two Fantastic Beasts from the original Harry Potter is that the characters are traveling to different countries, and Fantastic Beast 3 will be no exception. Today's announcement revealed that Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, will be one of the locations visited. So now we'll get to see what the Wizarding World is like in South America's biggest country during the early 20th uh, century. And that was actually teased a, a while ago by, uh, by, by um, J.K. Rowling, right? However, there was another piece of information, too. We know that David Yates is back to uh, direct the movie. And I think Yates outside of Alphonse Caron is probably like the best director, even though I feel like the that the Prisoner of Azkaban is as far as the franchise is concerned, like the original eight movies. It's probably the worst of the original eight movies in regards to how it treated the story. It is the best made version, the best made movie in that trilogy or in that Oct anthology, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it is in regards to the story, the worst it followed very closely by the Goblet of Fire for how they just deviated from key things. And then, of course, don't even get me started on Half Blood Prince and that finale. <sighs> That's Stephen Cloves because Cloves is working to set up the, the finale with the Deathly Hallows. And this is kind of where things are a little bit weird. So Stephen Cloves has now been called back in to help J.K. Rowling on the screenplay for uh, for these movies, right? For for this movie and probably four and five because they want to make this thing a five film uh, franchise. So Cloves is an interesting character because he did a good job adapting 
uh, Sorcerer and Chamber, right? Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. He did a good job adapting those because the books themselves were relatively straightforward. They were small. They were short. Uh, Sorcerer's Stone, I believe, was like 279 pages. Chamber of Secrets is around like 350 to 360 pages. And from there, the books got progressively and progressively longer. And J.K. Rowling just threw in a lot more stuff in there that was cool if you're reading the book, but if you're trying to adapt it, you got to pick and choose. And the thing is, I think... Uh, fans were a lot more uh, forgiving back then. I think if they tried that now, uh, there would be Game of Thrones season eight style of revolt on the internet. And that might actually have been something similar that happened with Crimes of Grindelwald, which is why we've seen this this like six month delay, which ultimately does delay the movie's release for a whole year. Because instead of coming out in 2020, it's now coming out in 2021. And so there's that. But Cloves, again was working with J.K. Rowling. Uh, she was feeding him information about future books as he was adapting in order to lay the breadcrumbs for what was to come. In the beginning, that was cool. By the end, I got a little bit frustrated because I feel like I said, like the Half-Blood Prince reveal was just kind of, eh. you know, it was meant to be this big moment in the books and it was kind of, eh, right? The ending of Goblet of Fire had this massive cliffhanger. You knew war was coming. You knew Snape was a double agent. This was this massive hyped up cliffhanger that should have absolutely been on screen in that particular fashion. It should have just really nailed it home. Dumbledore telling Harry, this is what's going on. War is coming. Voldemort is back. It was a great cliffhanger and the movie just bleh. <laughs> And so that's my problem. And I don't know if it's the script or if it's the director or if it's the editor or if it's the producers or whatever, but I always felt that when there was a good cliffhanger, it just sacrificed that and it sacrificed information that was relevant to the books uh, that if you don't know what's going on, you're going to be lost. And and they just, they sacrificed it for whatever reason. And I'm a little bit, I'm concerned about Cloves coming back. Now I know he would be considered the resident Harry Potter expert in regards to writing this movie's. So he would be a good person to work on J.K. Rowling. I just, I just don't know. I don't know if I'm, if I'm, if I'm a hundred percent excited for this simply because of Clove, Clove's being brought back in. I get it. It's a safe bet. It is. It's a safe bet. It's a multi-billion dollar franchise. It's an absolute safe bet. Uh, I just feel that at the end of the day, potentially this could have been like someone else, maybe with a little bit of better blood. Uh, a little bit, a little bit, maybe some fresh blood on it would have actually been a little bit better, a fresh take on this instead of going back to the person who has written all these movies, uh, and, and it, it is so blatantly just things, you know, that's my complaint, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. I, I hope that it's a better movie than crimes of Grindelwald. I hope the ending it, uh, you know, for crimes is, is, is better explored in this movie. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see again. I trust the director cause I like the director, but I am worried about the script. Um, as long as it's better than, than the previous two, I think we're going to be on point, but Harry Potter fans, uh, they, they almost kind of came out a bit on YouTube and revolt against crimes at Grindelwald. And clearly Warners is aware of that. And that's why things have been delayed. And JK Rowling's power has been minimized because she can't help but tinker with her own stuff. And, and I get that, but the fans are like, no, 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 you're going too far. Stop it. You're going cray cray. All right. They're going to get ready to lock her ass in Azkaban. hundred uh, percent. Anyway, your thoughts, your opinions on this. Let me know down in the comments below. Is this one you're excited for? Are you looking forward to it? Did you like the last two movies? Let me know your thoughts. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you so much for watching and peace out. This video is supported by patrons like you. If you'd like to become a patron, please head over to patreon.com forward slash Matt Jarbo.